So for those who attend the first talk in this room, I want to remind a few couple of things, which are the code of conduct that we have, especially for the room, is different from the Fozier one, so I encourage you to go on the page and read it out. If you're a developer, we would love to know your opinion, and uh, try the survey from bit.ly slash FOSDEM17, all in upper cases. And from all your presentations, uh, we encourage you to try the nightly version of Firefox, which can be downloaded from um, nightly.mozilla.org or mozilla.org slash nightly, whatever is easier for you. And we are trying to find out what motivates you to contribute to open source. So, so I invite you to complete another survey, we all have surveys these days, at uh, bit.ly slash why open source. Our next speaker is Nicolas Strani, and is one of the Mozilla lovers, and one of the few French people that really understand what GAP is. I don't know, I'm feeling bad now. And also he created the APA Apple, sorry, using Spider Monkey and the server since 2006, without 16, six only, a long time. And he likes to ride a unicycle motor, so welcome. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk to you about embedding the maintenance of PyDemonkey in a large scale project. Uh, I'll talk a quick introduction about what is PyDemonkey and about our team. I'll show you a kind of simple anywhere example, maybe a SpiderMonkey. And then you will see what comes next when you have thousands of bindings inside your project and that you have to maintain them and the pain that is going to be for you. And finally, um, last we'll see how to make embedded life easier by uh, making binding more easily to implement inside your project. Uh, so, if you don't know SpiderMonkey, it's Firefox, JavaScript, and Jam. Uh, it's uh, how you, it can be used in standalone projects to add JavaScript future bindings to your project. And it has a C++ API, um, a nice, very nice team, and a very good performance. Uh, there is a popular belief that V8 is faster than SpiderMonkey, but actually this is not quite right. And if you don't trust me, go see howwefastyet.com and you'll see that uh, SpiderMonkey is quite fast. Uh, about our team, I've been working with two very talented people for the past 10 years. And first, we built a project called the Ape. Uh, by the time, it was allowing you to do real-time communication inside the web browser when WebSocket didn't exist yet. And this was quite irritating. But now, you know, uh, there's WebSocket and nobody cares about this one. So we decided a few years later to build something else. Uh, we built uh, Medium. Medium is a general purpose JavaScript engine and rendering engine also. Uh, I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, after building Medium, we had a great op opportunity to try this in a production environment. environment. Uh, a company called Conco did a real-time bidding server, which is used in the advertising market. And this server will have to handle a billion requests every day, something like that. And we tried it, we built it with Medium, and it was really great. So a few, years, a few yeah, years later, we decided to open source it. Actually, it's been something like six months. It's out uh, for everybody. Um, so, uh, we will see a simple hello world. So, the idea is just to create a JS object robot, uh, which takes the names uh, as the first parameter, and which has one method, uh, each a method. And when you will uh, call this method, um, you should see something be printed, and like John says, hello world. Um, here are some sample code. I don't think you can really see what is going on here, but this is just to give you uh, an overview. Here are the declaration you need to do uh, to, in order to uh, get your bindings done. The first thing is to declare what we call a JS class, which has various information about your, uh, your JS class. <laughs> uh, then we have uh, a list of the functions used uh, inside, uh, um, of, inside your robot object. Here we have one method which takes one argument. Uh, then we have here a robot structure. Uh, we will use this one to store the name of the robot to let them retrieve it in the echo method. And then we have two method, two, two functions sorry, to do. Uh, with one which is the constructor of uh, our robots, and the other is the echo method. Uh, let's see what those methods are, those functions are doing. So the constructor is starting by doing the uh, argument checking and argument conversion. We just check we have the right number of arguments and the uh, match the type we are expecting. Sorry, we're not doing the argument conversion here. We're only checking we have the right arguments. 
Uh, the second part is about actually creating the JS object and storing a pointer to a robot structure which stores the name inside this JS object. And the last part of this code is actually uh, getting the string given to the constructor, translate it to a C string, and store it inside our robot structure. There is not much more in this constructor. Um, the second part is the echo method. Uh, here you can see that uh, just like for the constructor, we have all sorts of argument checking. Um, then we are retrieving the pointer to our robot structure, which stores the name. So we can then print the, sorry, we can then convert the given argument, the string we want to print, and print the, also the name of the robot. Um, this is not really complicated, but uh, now <laughs> imagine you have uh, a lot of bindings to write, and um, sorry, <laughs> I've been a bit too fast. You can notice in this short example that uh, we have, it's essentially a boilerplate code where you will uh, just um, make sure the arguments are correct, uh, with a correct type, etc., etc., and you will spend most of your time doing conversion between JavaScript and C or C++. And this is not really great because, you know, you get quickly bored. Um, as sign up, just uh, the example here were incomplete. They are missing a lot of stuff like the JS engine initialization, the, uh, a bunch of error checking. I made the example short to fit inside the screen. So uh, there's no JS exposure. So our object is not right now available to write a script, and there's no JS finalizer. I just made it to um, show a simple example. So, now what's happened when you have thousands of bindings inside your project? Well, as I was saying earlier, you will quickly get bored by writing boilerplate code and doing conversion. It's very error prone and you can easily make mistakes and your stuff will not work as expected or crash or, I don't know. Um, when you have thousands of bindings also, you can see there's quite a lot of code for not that much and uh, you have to handle spelling key. There's a new release, spelling key right? There's a new release every six months now, and uh, each new release brings some awesome features, uh, but also brings uh, API uh, change, and your code will break. So you have to update your thousand of bindings and all the argument checking, conversion, etc., to work with a new version. And this can be quite time consuming when you have, well, you want to upgrade. Uh, this example was quite simple, but when you are when you're working with more complicated complicated stuff like uh, asynchronous code or uh, multi string, uh, you have to get a deep understanding of how Spider Monkey is working internally. Um, if you don't want your code to crash or stuff like that, something uh, also uh, we didn't see this simple example, but uh, which will uh, arrive at some point when you do your binding is that. Uh, it can be tricky to correctly handle your JS object life cycle and make sure uh, it stays alive and it's not garbage collected when you don't want it to be garbage collected. And something we don't talk often actually uh, is about documenting your JS binding. Um, most of the time people put documentation you know, in the source code, uh, but when you're doing bindings, uh, it's kind of hard to write the documentation for your JS binding inside the C, inside the C file. Uh, but that's not all. Uh, there's also other issue if you really want to do to embed Spider-Link inside your project. Uh, what's happened is that most of the time Embedder wants more than uh, simple GS. You know, when you have Spider Monkey, uh, the only thing you'll get is really basic JavaScript. You have no timer and nothing. Well, mass, date, and that's pretty much it. And all type and structure, but that's not much more, much more than that. Uh, you only yes, as I said, timer, socket, file system access, eventual modules, uh, debugging facility. Um, usually when you start uh, doing this kind of bindings, you will introduce new third party libraries inside your project. So then the problem will be to build all of the third party libraries. Because um, if your product supports different platform or configuration, it will be different for each platform and configuration. Um, most of the time, well, well most of the time you will have different workers for or building scripts for each platform, but it can quickly become uh, very hard to handle because every day it needs to be updated also at regular intervals. So it's hard. So 
Okay, you make them be real life here. Well, uh, the project we've been working on, uh, medium, can help here, and with uh, something called ideal. That's what's that a bit later. So, a quick word about medium. Medium is a general purpose JavaScript runtime uh, and render engine. What is this? Uh, that's a uh, build on top of Spider Monkey. Uh, we have two uh, applications. There's medium server, which can be somehow uh, compared to what is not, not JS, but with less future, let's be honest. Uh, and we have medium frontend, which is uh, basically a window uh, where you can draw inside it uh, using Canvas API. Uh, actually, it's a bit more than that because you have Canvas API, WebGL API, Audio API, uh, they also uh, layout engine inside. Uh, just to be clear, this is not using HTML or anything like that. We just took Spider Monkey and, you know, made binding for it and be able to render stuff on the screen. Uh, so, from data, this is what may interest you more. Uh, we have two library, uh, the two software built on top of the two library. Little Dumb Core, which implements an event loops and some basic bindings, uh, like socket, web socket, HTTP, file, module, thread, and other stuff. And we have Little Dumb, which implements bindings for Canvas, WebGL, Audio, and a few other stuff too. Uh, we also have a bunch of tools and help inside of our project to help uh, building uh, all the third party. Uh, this one is called Constructor. It's a Python script that will invoke um, different build scripts of your uh, different third-party libraries. Uh, the great point of using Constructor is that you have all, uh, the, um, all the build step inside the same Python, Python file that will invoke the right commands. And it handles various caching so we don't have to build all the third-party every time and it's make uh, building all the third party for different platform or configuration much more easier. As the second tool, well, help all we have is called Class Mapper. It's a C++ uh, Edo file, which allows you to easily map a C++ object to a JS object. And while if you use Class Mapper, you will still have to write some board type code, like the uh, argument checking and type conversion, but uh, you are, uh, um, your object lifecycle that will be automatically handled. So if one of our objects is garbage collected, the, uh, C++, uh, your C++ class will be uh, destructed too. So it's avoid uh, having many issues with uh, garbage collection, but for simple case. Uh, we also have an experiment called Super for DevTools, which allows you to connect, uh, as of today, um, Google Chrome DevTools, I'm sorry, Mozilla. Uh, but it was a bit harder to get this right, so we started with Google Chrome. Right now, it doesn't support a lot of stuff. You can inspect uh, JavaScript object, uh, print stuff inside the console, but that's pretty much it. But in the future, we're really uh, looking forward to implement, to uh, get the IPA done, so you can interact with the debugger, put breakpoints, and et cetera, all this stuff. And the next thing, uh, so I was talking earlier, is IDL. Uh, well, let's see what IDL are. Um, IDL stands for Interface Definition Language, and it's uh, allowing you to um, describe your API. So here is a short example. Um, the interesting part is that we have a constructor. We already say we have a constructor that is taking a C string, and we have the echo method, which also is taking the C string. Um, you probably will see a bit later how it works on the next slide. Uh, you've probably heard of web ideal. They are used by uh, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and as in, they use WebDL to generate their bindings. The great thing about generating your binding, bindings is that you will no longer have to write ball plate code and all the argument conversion, type staking, etc., will be handled uh, automatically. So that will save you a lot of time, especially when you will need to update Spider Monkey since you will only have to. Uh, change your parser code to generate uh, code compliance uh, with the new spider Monkey version you want to upgrade to. Um, something great about IDL is also they are easily extendable, so you can build somehow your own flavor of IDL with what you require inside your project. And what we like about this is that, this about IDL, is that we find it's a great place to put your documentation in it. Uh, first, because with the uh, IDL code we have here, you'll be able to uh, automatically generate uh, the basic information for the documentation, and you will only have to write uh, what description of your, fun of your function, function sorry, and arguments. Yeah, okay. Before turning key, yeah, that's bad. But there's no tool available out of the box for doing this. Um, 
all the browsers have their own uh, ideal parser that is making the binding for us, but there is nothing available uh, for embedders. Well, this medium will try to bring something. So it's very experiment experimental. It, it's not quite perfect yet, but we are working on it, and we really hope that um, in this during this year we'll be able to get something that is working great. Uh, let's see this simple example. So. Uh, as you can see here, we still have uh, the uh, IVL code, and it only gives this code to a parser. It will do the latest uh, class here. So I don't think you can do the code, so I'll give, you know, I will give you a general idea of what it's doing. So it will generate a JS robot class, and this class is extending class mapper. As I talked about earlier, this one will handle uh, various stuff, like your object life cycle. And then it's also extending a JS robot base, which is um, well, the embedder will do the actual implementation. Uh, it's on the right, but we'll talk about it a bit later. So, our GS robot class. This is only generated code. Uh, here it's just a reader file, but I didn't put the generated code because it's way too big. Um, so, uh, the constructor here will only be invoked, invoked when uh, the GS object will be created. Uh, we'll see this. This, uh, the middle, sorry, we have three static methods. The first one is the actual constructor that is going to be invoked by the GS engine, receiving, you know, uh, all the GS arguments. Uh, the implementation of the constructor will do all the type checking and intervention, and we will then call the constructor of the GS robot class, which will call the constructor of your implementation, of the embedder implementation in the GS robot base class. Uh, we then have the list method, uh, method which, as it say, uh, list the method available on your object, so nothing very specific. And then we have the register object method, which uh, allows you to um, expose your uh, GS object to the JavaScript engine. Here you can see that we have expose uh, equal class. This means that uh, we will have the robot class uh, GS object available inside SpiderMT. Well, the G global GS object. So let's see to what looks like the embedder implementation, what you will have to write. And you can see here it's way, way, way uh, shorter than doing binding on your own. One of the great uh, advantage here is that you will receive a, a, C, a C string uh, when, uh, well, you will just have always C uh, arguments, com argument converted to C in all the method or constructor. So here it's quite easy to implement our class. We have uh, the uh, constructor that is receiving the name, and we just save the name inside the property of the uh, of our just related base class, the name argument here. Um, we have a destructor that is going to be called when, as I said, the JS object will be deleted. Or if you delete your C++ class, your JS object can still live, but uh, coming in method on it will raise an error. And here the destructor is only from the uh, name. And then we have the echo method, uh, which is way more easier than what we saw uh, previously. It just do a printf with the name uh, of the robot and the string we have. So as you can see, this really can really make your life way, way more easier when you have to handle a lot of bindings inside a project. Um, if I could sum up. Uh, a bit all the things when you well, when you embed uh, spider link inside a project and you need to add bindings into it um, the first thing you really have to do at all cost is to um, avoid doing um, avoid doing binding by yourself and use abstraction as much as possible so you can use IVR even if it's not finished but maybe in a few months you can use it um, otherwise you could use the class mapper uh, either fine, or you can write macros, or I don't know, whatever suits you, but I will at all cost writing your binding yourself. Uh, always use SpiderMonkey debug builds, and this is something very important. SpiderMonkey has a lot of subtitles, and you really have to understand what is going on under the hood uh, sometimes. Uh, and when you when you SpiderMonkey debug build, you will have a bunch of assertions when you're doing something that is not quite quite right, and this will help you to catch back way sooner than otherwise, than the other way. Um, there is a feature called the GC0, which will actually run the garbage collector very much more much more often. And when you have issue about uh, garbage collection with your object, enabling the GC0 will help you to really um, 
uh, see where uh, your issue are. It will crash pretty much as soon as you do something that is not uh, good. Well, when your stuff is not correctly routed, sorry. And it's finally check regular interval because if you miss a release, then the steps needed to get the next uh, release inside the project will be higher and you will need much more time to get it work to get inside the project. So try to update Spider Man key every six months at every release. You'll get nice future, performance boost, and well well, that's it. <laughs> um, so if you need help, also, when you're doing the bindings, uh, people of uh, the Spider Monkey are really great people. Uh, they're always here to help you and always here to uh, give you good advice. And uh, over the past 10 years, they offered us so much time, I can thank them enough to be there and be easily reachable. Um, this is what's made us use Spider Monkey, actually, because, you know, uh, having some people you can really talk to and that can help you to understand how Spider Monkey is working is really a plus when you're doing your own project. Uh, that's it. Um, I don't know. How much time? Okay, great. Uh, okay. Just, uh, whoops. Sorry. Uh, there are all the code samples, full time samples, with code error checking uh, and etc. are available on github.com slash medium slash first them. And you can find a project on medium.com or github.com slash medium. Any question? Wow. Okay. Did you understand something? <laughs> no? I see from their looks that they are like, whoa, something like that. Some of them, some of them. Okay. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. Bye.